All right, so the best way to understand um, anything that has to do with mathematics, whether it's inflation or this right here, is to give it a shot, go through a practice problem. So I invite you, uh, every time you see numbers like this, go through at least one of the problems, whether it's ones I include in the slide, modifying some numbers, or just um, going through the textbook and answering some of the questions. So we've seen some identities and with the information we have here, it allows us to answer all of these questions down here. May not be able to answer it in the same order that you see here, but uh, you can answer them all. So here, what is public saving? Well, public saving is always going to be T minus government spending. What is taxes? Well, we'll have to figure it out at some point. It's our T. What is uh, private savings? Well, it's the income minus uh, the taxes paid minus the consumption. What is national saving? Well, it's income minus what's spent by consumers minus what's spent by government. Or we could see it as public plus private saving. So these two added up, it's the same thing. And what is investment? Well, it's that national saving, it's the same amount. So we know national saving has to be equal to investment. So once we find this, we find both. So once we find all first three, the last two are really quick. So here, what do we have? Uh, government spends two billion and has a budget deficit of 300 million. So for it to have a budget deficit of 300 million, it must have collected 1.7 billion in taxes minus two billion of expenditures which is 0.3 billion in um, negative savings, which is its deficit of 300 million. So uh, 300 million is 0.3 billion. So over here the taxes, oops, almost made an error, the taxes would have to be 1.7. Over here, uh, public saving is negative 0.3. So make sure that this budget deficit is referred to as a negative. How about private saving? Well, it's going to be our GDP, which is equal to 10, minus the taxes, which is equal to 1.7, minus 6.5. So over here I have um, 8.2, so I'll have 1.8 as my private saving. Let's just calculate national saving this way, and then we'll be able to see if it adds up in the same way. So Y is 10 minus 6.5 minus 2 so I should have 1.5 and yeah if I add up 1.8 plus minus 0.3 it's equal to 1.5 as well so this would also be equal to 1.5 if we go through the answers here you have the same answers here as well just in case you didn't look at the video what if a tax cut of 200 million happen and consumers either save the full proceeds of the tax cut or consumers save a quarter of the tax cut and spend three quarters. Because that's the thing that happens often when you end up with more money in your bank account, you don't necessarily save it all. So this is an easy scenario, but it's not the most likely. Um, so what happens if the consumers save the full proceed? Well, this tax cut, assuming government spending doesn't change, is going to lead to a greater budget deficit or a smaller surplus by 200 million. And if the consumers save it all, that's going to be a, a drop in public saving for an equal increase in private saving. So in this case here, national saving is unchanged. So if national saving is unchanged, investment or that whole um, investment equilibrium we're going to talk about is unchanged in the first part. So for this part. But if consumers save a quarter of that amount and spend the three quarters of it, that means that they save 50. So public or national saving must go down by 150 million because it's gone down by 200, goes up by only 50. So public and national saving here, in this case here, national saving must drop 150 million. And uh, they spend that extra 150 million. Okay. Uh, so if they are, there's less national saving, there's going to be less investment as well. Which one's more realistic?
part two is typically more realistic and why is this question important well we have to understand that sometimes when uh, the government gives a, a budget cut it may hurt uh, investors and we'll see how that works in the, the loan wealth funds market which we'll see in the next video